Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight. The Crystal Palace is a goner. We've got the incredible scene straight ahead. A cabinet minister who was on that trip to New York defends the delegation. news is brought to you by Alive. Best. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. Bahamian Contractors Association President Leonard Sands has resigned from that post and as a member of the Free National Movement asserting political leaders gave instructions for him to be removed. Sands, who is a former candidate for the Free National Movement, said he was disappointed, shocked and concerned that the political directorate reportedly threatened that if he was not removed, BCA members would suffer the consequences. Jillian Gray reports. Bahamas Contractors Association President Leonard Sands has tendered his resignation and he says the reason is because of political interference. It was something I never thought I'd experience in this country where outside of an association that is independent of government, directions were given to have me removed. Instructions were given that if not followed, other persons will suffer severe penalties, whether it be to their their opportunities of contracts or that and the like. Sands said over the last few days it has been made clear to him and his board that his involvement as the president of the Bahamian Contractors Association is not in line with the wishes of those in political leadership. The personality in Leonard Sands clearly was not welcomed by the personality in the registrar and possibly the minister. However, Works Minister Desmond Bannister said there was no pressure from him to resign. Speaking with our news, the former BCA president said last Friday he was invited to a meeting by contractors registrar Omar Archer. Sands says he could not attend that meeting due to a prior engagement and received a message from his board that the Works Minister and the registrar were offended by his actions. I reached out to the registrar. His response to me, and I quote, I am far too busy for you now, Mr. Sands. My opportunity was at that meet and greet. In recent months, Sands has been very vocal about the number of foreigners working on the point development. My candor sometimes is misinterpreted. I believe that that candor caused there to be a, a view that this voice cannot be controlled. This voice has to be silenced. Sands also expressed concern about the appointment of Omar Archer as registrar under the Construction Contractors Act. No one from the outside, whether they are government or non-government, should have the right or ability to influence. Sands has also resigned from the FNM. Initially, he was the party's candidate in the Bain and Grantstown constituency, but withdrew his candidacy ahead of the 2017 general election. Not just a member, a former candidate ratified by the hierarchy of the party as a standard bearer. But to have what happened to me in the manner in which it happened to me is not the way I thought friends should behave. And if these are my friends, I cannot find myself consorting with people who will allow that to happen to one of them. Reporting for our news, I'm Jillian Gray. All right, thanks, Jillian. Well, the three towers of Crystal Palace Resort and Casino came tumbling down this morning as Bahamara seeks to clear the way for more amenities for its guests. Jared Higgs was among hundreds who turned out bright and early to witness the planned demolition. It took years to build, but only seconds to destroy. The Crystal Palace Resort and Casino was once a staple in the island's collection of tourist offerings. Today, hundreds of visitors and Bahamians looked on as the trio of towers disintegrated before their eyes. We had a successful demolition. We're continuing to survey the area and make sure that we have a true all clear uh, and that we've dispatched teams to do any necessary cleanup in the surrounding areas. Bob Mikowski was one of those spectators. Despite living in an industrialized country like the USA, 
Today's experience was a first for him. What marvelous experience, uh, just to see something that huge uh, come down in seconds. It was, it was just awesome. Is this your first time witnessing a demolition? Uh, yes, it is, except for on television, but <laughs> being here firsthand is awesome. Crystal Palace was originally styled as the Cable Beach Casino in 1983 and rebranded as the Crystal Palace under the ownership of Carnival Cruise Lines. In 1988, Carnival spent $135 million to construct the 876-room hotel along with a casino. At the time, the New York Times noted that it was the largest resort in the Caribbean. Not only providing employment for hundreds of Bahamians, Crystal Palace was a popular location for weddings, graduation ceremonies and other events. Amos Major, who worked for the resort until its closure in 2013, says he was a young man when he first set foot on the property. I saw a few videos when around, it almost brought tears to my eyes. Um, you know, persons who have been around the hotel who spend their youth in there. Um, I went there at a tender age of 22. A young boy, you know, um, in the, a young boy in the industry. And when, I, when the hotel had closed, I was in my 40s then. Now that pile of debris behind me marks where the Crystal Palace's three towers once stood. They're clearing the way for more amenities for the Bahamar Resort. Bahamar purchased the resort from Phil Ruffin's Ruffin Group in 2005 as it sought to revitalize the Cable Beach Strip. Bahamar President Graham Davis has said their ambitions for the beachfront space include additional pools and a water park. Lenovo Construction, the company responsible for today's exercise, released a statement following the induced collapse confirming its success. Jones says a lot of planning went into the demolition. We wrapped some of the buildings with geotextile fabric to protect um, and mitigate any environmental concerns. And we also cleared out some of those um, parts of those um, surrounding businesses. The demolition was the first in New Providence since the Montague Beach Hotel was torn down in 1993. Reporting for Our News, I'm Jared Higgs. Two men were today charged in relation to that armed robbery that happened in front of the Royal Bank of Canada along Prince Charles Drive last week. Police believe 23-year-old Malik Smith in the white t-shirt and a cast on his arm robbed Kevin Major of $4,000 belonging to Domino's Pizza. Police also believe 31-year-old Akande Gibson in the light blue striped polo shirt committed a bedman to robbery by commuting the offense of the armed robbery. But Gibson asked Chief Magistrate Joanne Ferguson Pratt how the AG's office works as he understands police were looking for someone who drove a silver vehicle. He said the one he rented was purple, so he wasn't sure how there could be a mix-up. The pair were not required to enter a plea and can apply for bail in the Supreme Court. The matter was adjourned to December 12th. Well, Minister of Transport and Local Government Renwood Wells is defending the government's nearly 20-member delegation to the UN in New York. Wells, who was on that nearly week-long trip last week, says no one was idle and insisted they all had a job to do on behalf of the Bahamian people. Jasmine Brown reports. Wells vigorously defended that trip and all who were on it, insisting everyone who attended had something to do. We are in the business of politics, and at times the politics trumps the overall national interest. Every Christ soul who went on that trip had a function and a duty that was needed. That was Wells' passionate response to critics who blasted the size of the Prime Minister's 18-member delegation to New York for the 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly. During his contribution to the debate on fiscal responsibility last week, Pine Ridge MP Frederick McElpine lashed out of the government over what he deemed excessive traveling. Though some questioned the number of people the Prime Minister took with him to New York, Wells insisted the last thing anyone was doing on that UN trip was partying. I can tell you, this was not some um, merry-go-lucky party. I want the Bahamian people to understand that. Wells also defended his presence on the trip. Every day, my day was packed with bilateral meetings from various countries around the globe requesting their assistance that they would keep us on the Group C Council that's a part of the IMO. The competition in the international arena has become stiff, and so the Prime Minister and his wisdom decided that we were going to increase our strategies at the UN and become a whole lot more relevant in the issues that are at the UN. So he took the requisite team he needed to get the results he needed. While in opposition, the Free National Movement often criticized the then Christie administration for its travel, calling it wasteful expenditure. Wells asked about the FNM's comments while in opposition and their current travel habits. Wells insisted there is simply no comparison. Proof of the pudding is in the eating. When we go and travel, Look in the House of Assembly, there's always a report as to what we did and what we accomplished. You don't hear us going off on some furlough. Meantime, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis earlier this year committed to disclose ministers' travel costs. 
Press Secretary Anthony Newbold has said that the report on the minister's travel will come by the end of the year. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. All right, thanks, Jasmine. Well, it's a match made in tech heaven. Fusion Superplex, the highly anticipated IMAX theater, is only six weeks away from opening, and they've recently announced a partnership with Rev and Alive. Jared Higgs reports. Absolute Cinema Experience. DX. Representatives of Fusion's two newest partners were treated to a tour of the $42 million facility, complete with nine theaters. <laughs> Fully equipped game rooms, restaurant and lounge space, and much more. And of course, we have the chance to see the big screen in action. The IMAX theater, with its nearly impossibly huge screen, is cool, but my favorite was the 4DX cinema, complete with a miss machine, bubbles, and of course, you better hold on to your seat. Getting back to the partnership. Oh, this is absolutely a milestone. I mean, but again, I think the key that links it all together is the innovation. Because when Cable Bahamas first came to the market, it was all about innovation. It's a partnership to rival all partnerships. The eagerly awaited Fusion Superplex and the Tri, tested and proven Cable Bahamas, coming together to enhance their product offerings. Cable Bahamas COO John Gomez says nearly 25 years in the business means Cable Bahamas has the depth to support the newest entertainment providers in the country. Not just the technology, right, but the innovation as well that uh, Cable Bahamas has been renowned for. So we're able to bring that. Um, also, when you look at our network in terms of the, the infrastructure, it's resilient, it's robust. Um, you look at the capacity, this facility is going to require uh, quite a bit of bandwidth to be able to, to download and ingest the content and the material that they need. So when you look at the network that we have, it's very nimble, it's agile, uh, we can expand to be able to, to support all of their needs. Alive is on the home team too. Garvet Brown, the company's chief Alive commercial officer, says as a slightly new company as well, their philosophy lines up with Fusion. This is like perfect synergy for us. I mean, the minute I was introduced to the guys and I saw the project, I mean, we, I think we just all felt it. We just had that vibe, that energy, that we were thinking the same way. We were on the same path. We, you know, the things that we wanted to do, the things that we want to do with media, content, mobile, uh, dovetailed perfectly with what they want to do. The guys making it all happen are Carlos Folks and Tokoyo Bridgewater. We thought that that partnership would allow us to take advantage of, of each of our strengths. And what we've discovered is we will provide the convenience and the value here at this building. Cable Bahamas will do it at home, and our live partners will do it in the middle because they're the mobile application. So we should be able to cover all the ground. This is different. This is not just a movie theater, and I will say this in every interview that I give. This is about the entire experience. This is about the family experience. This is about the four-year-old straight to the 65-year-old and beyond. What we're providing right now is a place for you to come, to stay, and when you leave, you want to come back. Folks on Bridgewater say they're eyeing an opening date sometime in November. For our news entertainment, I'm Jared Higgs. All right, thanks, Jared. Still to come, Japan's million-dollar donation to NEMA. Stay tuned.